Friends, buddies, pals, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. I don't know if this is gonna be a video. I guess if you're watching this, then it end up being a video. I've said video a lot so far. So it's pretty late. It's like 1.30, 2 in the afternoon, and I just had some time, and I thought, I think I'll go fishing. It rained heaps last night, like a lot. So I figured this river would be up, and, you know, potentially, like, on the verge of being, like, not fishable, but then potentially really good. And, um, seems like it's low and clear, so turns out I actually don't know anything about rain and subsequent river level reactions, fundamentals, that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put a natural on and a long leader and an indicator and try and catch a fish out of here. There'll be fish in here, 100%. 100%. Alright, let's go team. Let's I've go. got the uh, Helios 3 5 weight in a D in the old Papa Smurf kind of blue, which I'm really digging. Mirage LT Reel from uh, Orvis, and Scientific Angler's Infinity Smooth in a six weight. So I've overloaded this rod by a line weight uh, just because of the kind of fishing I'm doing. Heavy nymphs, long leaders, indicators, lots of roll casting, lots of water loading, that kind of stuff. So having that extra line weight, weight? On there really helps with all that kind of fishing. Makes it really, really easy. So off of that, I've built my own straight through leader, pretty much 3x. I'm actually down to 4x at the end. If you don't know how I go about that, I'll leave a link up here and you go check it out. So from the tip of my fly line, I've got a quick step down of 2x, then I've got about a rod length of 3x, and then I've probably got about an arm's length of 4x. A little less than an arm's length of 4x. So probably about 12, 13 feet to my first fly, which is a home tide kind of double tungsten thing. I don't know, it's caught a couple of fish, but I don't know what it is. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, I did have an egg off of that from the last time I was fishing. And then, uh, just because it's a bit lower and clearer than I thought, and I'm guessing if this has been fished today, it's probably been fished with eggs. So let's give them a natural. Plus, it always feels like it counts more if it's on a natural. Lanyard up. Shout out to Golden Trout Lanyards. Keeping me in lanyards for the last few years now. 4X off of there. So off the bend of the heavy dropper. I'm going to double Davy knot this 4X tag ends in my hip pack. We'll go about 18 inches or so of 4X. And um, then I'm gonna chuck a little UV pheasant tail flashback. Size 14 from Cat 3 Flies. And I really like this fly for bits of water like this, like deep pools and stuff like that, which is kind of the deep and dark. And I just think that UV really, really sticks out in that darkness. Take that barb off. So there's my UV flashback pheasant tail about 18 inches to my dropper. Oh, I've got about two feet of 4X, about a rod length of 3X, then about a foot or so of like 1X at the very top for that step down to a perfection loop, which is going straight to my fly line. Uh, indicator, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add a bit to that. I'm gonna add a little bit to this just because she's starting to look a little bit well-worn and she's kind of getting a bit smaller and a bit thinned out, so. We'll fluff her up. This is the key. This is the key when you're making an indicator with yarn, with wool. This is the key to a good, good floaty indicator, and that's to fluff it up. You've got to tease it out and get all those strands lying like straight like that. It makes a much better indicator. Trust me. All right, all right, all right. Let's add in some, some cheeky, cheeky chartreuse, some green, some yellow, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to fluff that in with that white. Loop it over, straight over the middle of all that nicely teased out wool. And then just push that plastic sleeve back up, just ease it into place. Just ease it in. Yeah. Troll doll. Once you've got your troll doll here. Hit back. Flat top it like Arnie and Predator, put yourself a good indicator. We are good to go. Uh, right, so the looks of it, I'm gonna start off at about, I guess it's about nine feet deep, more or less. Better rod length to my first fly. So we'll give it a nudge. See how we're set up then for weight and depth. I haven't actually fished this piece of water yet this winter. I've guided on it a few times and it's it's produced on the right day but I haven't got to fish it myself yet. It's just such a cool piece of water to fish. Right over the back there somewhere I'd expect to get a hit. 
Two for two, nothing. Come on now. Has to be fish here. Quite like where that's going. Ooh, do I need to be a little bit heavier, perhaps? Hmm, all right, let's add a bit of split shot. Because I'm pretty sure I'm deep enough. But I will go a little bit deeper and add a little bit of split shot just to make sure I'm getting down. Not really showing any signs of, of kind of catching bottom through that really like nice deep part. I don't know if I'm gonna put that split shot, I don't know, what is that? What is that guys, like six inches? <laughs> No, like two inches. So I've just added just that little bit of extra depth and that little bit of extra weight. I just want to make sure that I'm getting my flies like right on the bottom through there, like through this real main part of the pool. I'm just giving that some, I'm letting some line out of my rod tip so it's got some line to take with it as it goes around the back of that eddy. I think far too many people fish with like not enough slack in their system. Especially in a piece of water like this with these weird currents. You can, there's no way you can get a natural drift over the back with, with a straight line straight to your indicator. You've got to, have, got to have those wiggles in it. Soak up all those weird currents. Here we go. That's right over there, isn't it? Come on, there's got to be a fish over there. All right, I'm going to change fly. Okay. Yeah, 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 I know, shut up. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, like that. Flies just landed in that fast, riffly stuff. Let it come around. Give it somewhere to go. Those flies should be pretty deep by now. So really kind of coming into the zone anywhere through here. Anywhere over there. It's money, that is. I expect that to get eaten. Uh, that was a fish. I was like, oh. Yeah, he didn't like that. I, <laughs> I just pulled that food right out of his mouth. And that was like first drift on the egg too. Just goes to show, you know, sometimes that fly changes. Is all you need. Yep. And that case in point, well, it feels like a good fish. It feels chunky. It just feels kind of pretty heavy. Dude, it just feels like a, it's like a big brown. It's not a brown. You can see it's a rainbow, but it's fighting like a big brown. Cool fish. Cool fish. Yeah. Right on that egg. Oh. oh, it's a great fish. Just again, like the second drift right over the back with the egg and it made all the difference. Flies were down deep. So just, just ticking all those boxes, eh? Just making sure you've got enough depth, then making sure you've got enough weight to get your flies down to where you need them. And then really thinking about your line control, your line management, your drag, making sure you get the best drift you can so those flies drift naturally. So that was a pretty good example of just kind of ticking all those boxes and then going, there's gotta be fish in there. So then it's time to maybe start changing flies and that was it I mean I lost a fish on the first drift caught that on like the second drift and I've been fishing that for maybe 15 minutes so yeah pays to not be lazy don't be lazy change shit up
So I found this m massive length of discarded fluoro just left on the ground here. There's a heap of bird life around here. Whoever left this, shame on you. On that note, I've got this new kind of rig keeper system. Let me show you. So basically, if I get my line and just double it over a few times, let me direct your attention down here. Stop it. So this is what you've got. You've got yourself like this tubular thing uh, and it twists at the bottom. It comes out like this and there's a little piece of Velcro in there and uh, that just slots in there. So what you do is you just line up, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little kind of groove in there. So you've got a bit of Velcro there, groovy bit there. Stick that in the groove and then just uh, turn it and it just drags it all inside that little tubing. And holds it in place like that, it's brilliant. And then all you do when you get home is you just take that out, pair of scissors, cut along there and just drop it in the bin. How freaking good is that? Such a good idea. I'm, I'm super impressed with it and I've actually been using it over that trash fish. I know, blows my mind. Yeah. God, these fish are so strong today. Dude, there's some nice fish in here. Just for being out there, that should be fish. And it is. What a beautiful fish. That. See you, buddy. Pretty good, uh, pretty good fit there. That's amazing, isn't it? Just a really healthy, fresh fish. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a fish. You're a fatter. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, strong. Look at the, look at the bulletness of that torpedo. Swinging rod only. All right, so what I've got is the, this is the five weight Helios 3F Mirage LT size two reel. And I've got a scientific anglers integrated Skagit line, intermediate tip with their fast sync sonar tip on top of that. And then in this intruder style fly from NZ fishing flies, which I don't know, was the first thing I came to in my box. Oh no, I just fired it straight into the blackberry. <laughs> Let's just calm down, shall we? Oh yeah, that was a fish. Oh, I was just about to lean back into that. Just boom, 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 boom. That was cool. This is probably going to be it for the day. Maybe. I don't know. Just need one. Just need one. Oh, there's one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was so close to my head. Oh, yes, that was definitely a hit, 100%. Last cast, then I'll go. Three hits, eh? Might be me. All right, that's it, I'm done. Three hits, one semi hookup, 
and that was all I got in the swing. I actually expected a little bit more. I did. I kind of felt like I'd come away with the fish there, but that's all good. Three hits could have been three fish. Just didn't work out that way. It was a cool five o'clock, probably three hours fishing. It was good. I enjoyed that. It was uh, worth doing. Coming out, getting a couple of hours. Pretty quiet around, which is surprising, but happily take that. All right, I'm out of here. Give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment in the comment section below, and all that good stuff. Have a great week. See you on the next one.